Hi guys, Asmo here and today I have for you a simple Wave of Conviction Ignite Elementalist League Starter Guide. This is gonna be, basically I'm gonna go over the POB, talk about leveling this character, the progression of the passives, the progression of the skills, what skills you wanna take at each of the levels and also what items you wanna aim for at the beginning, right when you get to the maps. This is basically gonna be what this guide will en encompass. So let's start with the passives. This is a leveling path that I have tried yesterday. I did it on stream as well and this worked very well for me. It's very smooth. However, the main drawback of leveling like this is the fact that you have to transition a few times and swap your skills. However, it's not that difficult because these skills largely keep the same supports. So you start with pathing through the spell damage and you pick up, um, first you pick up the firewalker, then you pick up the practical application. So you get the res and most importantly, the strength and dex for requirements for some of your gems and then also at the beginning I very much recommend grabbing a belt with strength or the, the implicit like heavy belt with uh, strength and also a jade amulet for dexterity so those two items will make sure that you're gonna have a lot of strength and dexterity so that you can use whatever skills you want to use and then we pass toward the life mastery the earlier you pick the plus 50 life the stronger it is because it's a flat amount and uh, early on you have a very low flat amount of life and then we pass toward the elemental overload so on the bottom here you can select the other progressions so we go to leveling two and this is where we start pathing here slightly different than uh, the usual because we're going for uh, a lot of aoe aoe is very very helpful and also we're going for the rune binder so that we can have the armageddon brand attached to uh, the second uh, like second armageddon brand attached to the enemy so once you pick your uh, lab once you do the sh get the shaper of flames then you want to pick the fire mastery because uh, otherwise you would be losing the ignites uh, but this way you're not losing the ignites and once you ignite you do 100% increased damage with hits against ignited enemies um, and in the beginning we do mostly hit damage and later on we start focusing only on ignite um, so we pick this for the aoe and fire damage and also this mastery which is very quick to reach and then we're right by the rune binder so when you're level 28 and you switch to armageddon brand, you can just pick that up and then you drop your holy flame totem and you have your uh, brands instead uh, then we are right next to this so we can take advantage of this insane cluster the templar cluster early on instead of pathing around it and having to go very far around it we can get right away into this area and then uh, when you are in act three you're going to be grabbing shield charge so this is going to benefit uh, you with the attack speed dexterity um, and also the cast speed which is of course very very helpful and also we're going to get the holy dominion uh, earlier for the resistances as well as the light of divinity early for the extra crit which helps with your elemental overload uptime so that is the way the reason why why we are pathing to here uh, then next leveling progression we're gonna path through here we're gonna grab the life mastery for uh, reduced mana cost this is very very easily sustained when you especially when you pick up this um, surge of vigor and recovery mastery this is very very powerful if you haven't used this node yet like a lot of people complain early on about elementalists being very squishy because you don't really have any uh, defenses especially that early on and there is really nothing better than you can do than pick up some extra reach Region, which is going to help you uh, just su sustain so much of the damage you're not going to have to rely on your life flask as much and once you pick up another fire mastery for extra region you're basically going to be able to out heal anything you're going to be able to out heal the damage of traps in lab without pressing life flasks it's just super comfortable to level with and just completely changes how tanky the character feels and then we go for the ailment effect and divine judgment as well as pick up the life here from the devotion um, and that's basically the setup here and in terms of the order of the uh, of the ascendancy points we pick up the shaper of the flames then we go for the mastermind of discord and then third one is going to be heart of destruction so we go to the uh, last uh, leveling uh, before a respec into wave of conviction and this is going to basically also include the mana mastery for the reduced um, for the increased i mean mana reservation efficiency of skills and we start picking up damage over time nodes so first we grab the heart of the flame 
before we start doing that because we still care about hit damage but after that we pick up the uh, breath of flames and we can pick up the mastery here for uh, one uh, life regen per second for each one percent uncapped fire res and we actually get a lot of fire res because we get resistances from the practical application we get resistances from holy fire um, and it's very easy to be over capped and I, I kill all bandits every single time I level this uh, and even with killing all bandits I had a lot of over uh, capped fire resistances so that was a huge amount of regeneration and that we got um, then of course we get this uh, and in the mastery we can take here fire exposure you inflict applies additional minus five percent to fire resistance so that's basically another multiplier uh, we can grab sovereignty so we can fit uh, our auras which I'm going to talk about in a moment and then we also grab the acrimony and the mastery here is very very useful because it gives us not only the duration of ailments which is the uh, ignite uh, duration but also the increased skill effect duration which is very helpful for your curses for your wave of conviction flying further and things like that so that is very very helpful and then this is basically how you will pretty much finish the campaign this is like level 67 um, you finish the campaign and after you finish the campaign uh, once you're ready you re respect to wave of conviction ignite so we're gonna drop the rune binder um, and we're gonna drop um, what else we're gonna drop it's gonna be slightly different we're gonna drop a couple of nodes here so this is the respect right uh, we drop the spell damage nodes as well because we don't care about spell damage we don't care about hit damage ignite doesn't benefit from spell damage so we drop these nodes we drop these nodes over here and we respec and instead we uh, pass through here and take also the searing heat the ignites you inflict deal damage faster is a very powerful modifier so that's basically how uh, the tree looks like and then afterwards there is really not that much else unless you wanted to like play in hardcore and become very tanky you could pick a bunch of life here uh, but the better way is to go toward the right side and here we have access to the eldritch battery we have access to whispers of doom um, influence and then this nice cluster which gives us the um which gives us the uh, spell suppression as well as another multiplier here enemies ignited or chilled by you have minus five to elemental resistances so this is where we path and that's basically the skill tree as it looks like before going into cluster jewels uh, you can uh, have access to two very nice slots where you have cluster jewels uh, if you put cluster jewels you'll probably cut uh, things like this fire damage here you could cut another some fire damage here you could cut this area you could potentially cut this area as well uh, but you'd have to compensate for some of these things with gear like for the resistance loss for the dexterity loss and stuff like that we pick one dexterity node and also we're pathing through here here, as opposed to through here because we have option either this node or this node but I definitely recommend passing through here because in case of emergency you can pick the strength or um, dexterity node you can also potentially find tattoos that are gonna be uh, applicable to those and you can quicker get to the suppression instead of having to pass through all of this uh, life and then get to suppression so this is the superior pathing in my opinion uh, but it's a very tiny detail um, and in terms of the ascendancy uh, the last one from the uber lab you can either pick shaper of storms or you can pick bastion of elements if you want to be a little bit more tanky this is basically more single target damage um, it scales with um, effect of elemental ailments so you can scale that on your gear as well um, so you can uh, get a higher multiplier uh, or you can go for the more tankiness and immunity to reflect which is very helpful as well in the early progression when you have to do corrupted maps uh, in order to get completion and you cannot uh, afford to re-roll a reflect you can go for the bastion of elements and you're gonna be totally fine as well uh, so now let's go over the skills and the skill setups that you want to uh, use early on so let's go to the first leveling skill setup this is basically the standard setup that is being used uh, by speedrunners and racers like i'm exiles and tai tai killer um, uh, basically uh, Rolling Magma is going to be a link to Elemental Proliferation and Combustion early as a 3-link, so your priority very early on is to look for a 3-blue 3-link. Um, and then you're also going to use Holy Flame Totem and Flame Wall. And basically, as you're clearing, you're just throwing uh, Rolling Magmas and you can add Flame Wall if it's a tankier pack. And if it's like a magic pack, you can also drop the Holy Flame Totem. That's for more single target damage. And ideally, you want the Flame Wall to be on top of the monster while also the projectiles from Holy Flame Totem and the Rolling Magma projectiles fly through the flame wall and then we have frost blink with arcane surge 
If you have another tr another three link with like blue 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 other than the rolling magma, you can for example add the flame wall into this three link and have it benefit from the arcane surge as well. You can do the same thing with holy totem. If you have for example, if you muled um, templar uh, for extra like to, to get the elemental proliferation earlier, you're gonna have an extra for example summon phantasm that you can link to the holy flame totem if you have a red blue socket. Uh, there is a lot you can do earlier on if you have like extra currency extra sockets uh, but this is the bare minimum that you should be leveling with uh, and then once you get to act two you're gonna add a couple more things so you're gonna be adding the herald of ash and skaterbots those are gonna be your two auras that you start with um, you should not struggle too much with mana early on this should be all right just using a uh, mana flask i usually use uh, one life flask two uh, quicksilvers and two uh, mana flasks uh, so for single target for boss fights sometimes i need to use the second mana flask if i like overuse the one um, uh, but usually you should be fine with that uh, and then also we get the wave of conviction um, it's very useful it does a lot of damage but early on you're really gonna be uh, probably just spamming rolling magma until you get the brand's wave of conviction it's not gonna be something that you're gonna be using that much but let's get to act three this is where we're gonna do a first swap so once you get to level 28 you want to do uh, first you want to do the library and then you want to do your lab. Once you do the library, you're going to have access to some extra gems that are going to speed you up a lot. And that's going to be mostly the shield charge. So while you are in Act 2 already, you should be looking for a red, green, green. Ideally, it should be a shield because that's going to be easy to replace. So if you can find a shield with red, green, green, that's going to allow you to put in their shield charge, faster attacks and momentum, which is going to speed you up a lot. And then also you can use a blood rage in order to uh, get more attack speed as well as to get frenzy charges which are gonna make you faster make you deal more damage it's just a huge amount of clear speed provided by blood rage so i definitely recommend using blood rage and taking advantage of shield charge it is definitely worth doing library on this character um, and then you can also uh, cut skitter bots and get determination instead you could min max a little bit and use haste instead of determination early and because determination at the very low levels is is not that powerful but the more you level when you get to like act five act six you want to definitely put on determination and it's going to make your character uh, it's going to make your character feel much more tanky um, and then we still are going to be using herald of ash um, flammability as well with wave conviction and then we're going to have the armageddon brand setup so basically Elemental proliferation and combustion. This is what we had with magma orb before. Uh, so we swap the magma for the Armageddon brand and then we add cruelty once you get a four link. So for your four link, you're looking for blue, 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 uh, like four blues and uh, three blues and one red, right? So blue, 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 or blue, 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 red. Uh, those are the ideal ones that you wanna get. Um, and then the second skill that we're gonna be using, the second four link is gonna be flame surge. So this is a little bit different than the speed running setup. The speed running setup uses, um, cremation and then with cremation you have to have um you have a lot of flexibility for the gems uh, but you also have to have uh you have to have the desecrate you have to spawn the desecrate uh, cast cremation three times and it does allow you to run a little bit more so it is a safer play style uh, than the flame surge however flame surge is much easier to play does pretty much the same amount of damage because it both cremation and flame surge do a huge amount of damage they're absolutely massive uh, for single target uh, so it's up to you which one you use i think flame surge for softcore especially is the better choice because it's just easier to use and you're going to be already leveling the stuff that you're going to be using for later so i definitely prefer the flame surge but cremation setup is also really good just a little bit more finicky to play with um, and then once you get to act four you're going to have access to a couple more things that are going to make your life a little bit easier so you're going to get for example hex touch uh, which is going to be uh, linked to wave of conviction and flammability and that's going to allow you to just use wave of conviction on top of the boss and that's it you're gonna apply wave of conviction flammability and that's it so your uh, your play pattern is basically gonna look like you stack the brands the brands have six second duration before uh, they are attached and then five second duration while attached so you spawn the two brands wherever the boss will appear and then once it appears 
you shoot Wave of Conviction and it's gonna debuff with the Wave of Conviction, your extra exposure from Elementalist, Flammability, so it's gonna debuff the enemy like crazy. Um, and then you're gonna just hold down Flame Surge and it's gonna be, the enemy is gonna be ignited, the brands are gonna be doing damage, uh, wave of conviction is going to be uh, debuffing the guy and then you're going to be just spamming flame surge um, and the flame surge is going to have a little bit of a different links so from act four we have access after killing maligaro to ignite proliferation uh, which is a little bit better than um than elemental proliferation because it has the da more damage with ignite of course uh, and then also flame surge we're gonna um, use immolate because that's gonna be doing uh, a lot of damage so instead of faster casting you're gonna be using immolate if you had the four link before that's gonna be the swap that we're doing um, and then of course we got the flame dash herald of ash determination shield charge blood rage and you can also start using clarity um, because we're gonna be pathing towards certain passives like once you pick up this uh, mana node and also this life mastery for the mana cost and get clarity you're gonna basically stop it's gonna stop you from like requiring to use a mana flask and once you don't need to use mana flask you can start using defensive flasks right so we're gonna be able to use things like jade granite or quartz flasks together with the quicksilver and we're gonna be able to uh, be a little bit tankier and faster uh, so that's basically the setup here and then that's basically how you're gonna finish the campaign from act four onwards it's basically all the same until we uh, finish the campaign and then we respec. In order to respec to Wave of Conviction, um, I basically recommend just doing it after campaign. Right after campaign is completely fine. And the reason why we don't want to do it earlier is because of a few reasons. Number one, we want to have access to all of the um, passives that uh, stack damage, that, that, that give us the uh, damage over time. So we want to have a little bit more access to like uh, more passives. We also want to have more AoE. So we definitely want to have the third lab which is going to be the heart of destruction because we're going first for the shaper of flames this is going to be necessarily our third lab right so we don't have access to this until we basically kill kitava so without this i wouldn't play the wave of conviction your aoe is not going to be big enough but once you have this and we have enough passives to scale the ignite so you have the enough uh, ignite scaling you have the uh, extra duration from the mastery here uh, you have the aoe that's when uh, we can uh, swap and also whenever whenever we can get obliterate right because obliteration is going to also increase our clear like crazy so um, let's talk about the skills first and then we move on to the gear so for skills this is just a very straightforward simple set setup so we've got wave of conviction cruelty uh, combustion and then for the new supports that are going to be more optimal here uh, whenever you get a proliferation which you can get from either gloves so on gloves you can get this from um, the either searing exarch or eater of worlds modifier which gives you let me see actually um yeah, this is a Searing Exarch modifier. So once you get this Searing Exarch modifier, then you're gonna be able to drop Ignite Proliferation. Um, and so it's gonna be Way of Conviction, Cruelty, Swift Affliction, Burning Damage Combustion, and Unbound Ailments. Um, unbound Ailments is very nice because you get, you get, it gets you the duration. Um, added Fire Damage at this point is basically like maybe 1% better than Unbound Ailments, but Unbound Ailments increases the duration, which helps you with the uptime of your Ignite. It's just much uh, better to play with. And then we've got Arcanist Brand, which is gonna cast for us a lot of things. It's gonna cast Flammability, Elemental Weakness, and Flame Surge. All of these things are gonna add a ton of damage, and it's gonna make the playstyle very easy. Your shield charging around, you're just spamming Wave of Conviction, which kills everything with the proliferation, explosion from the wand, uh, and then basically we're just uh, putting Arcanist brand on a single target that's it that's all we're doing we just have two buttons right one for extra damage for to debuff uh like an essence or a boss in a map and then the wave of conviction and uh, for auras we're gonna be using determination grace herald of ash herald of purity so two heralds both of them uh, multiply our damage it's uh, very efficient they're very efficient for our build and then we're using determination and grace to be as tanky as possible um, without grace you're gonna be taking a little a lot of damage until you like get a lot of block right so if you don't want to be too squishy play with grace if you want to get more damage you could use haste or you could use hatred both of those um, eventually will increase your damage once once you start doing the conversion the hatred is going to be great before that the uh, grace uh, and uh, haste are the options and i would definitely recommend the grace it's going to be much easier for you to play without having to like dodge all of the projectiles flying at you and worry about it too much grace is definitely a huge quality of life for this build and then we're going to have divine blessing malevolence for the extra damage for single targets so whenever you are fighting a boss you can also use the malevolence divine blessing you can keep it up at all times if you want it lasts like 15 seconds so it's not too hard to do 
Uh, you can uh, link it with uh, increased duration as well if you get a little bit more energy shield um, but, but if you don't have the cost then you just keep it like this and we're using blood rage for mapping as well because we have enough region to sustain it very very easily um, then we're using shield charge faster attacks momentum uh, still just to move as fast as possible and we have also cast when damage taken a molten shell you can use increased duration you can use a couple of other skills here if you want um, you could also if you have a source of endurance charges if you're using like um and during composure a small cluster you can also use immortal call immortal call is basically slightly better ehp like it's gonna protect you from bigger burst of damage um however it's gonna be shorter duration than molten shell molten shell is lingering a little bit longer uh, so for that reason also you have an option of uh, running val molten shell i probably recommend molten shell uh, in the beginning so now let's look over the gear the gear i picked here is super super simple this is something that you can do in ssf very easily and just basically like the basics to aim for while progressing right there is nothing special here everything can be crafted with an essence or bought for very cheap and stuff like that so we got obliteration which can be self-farmed or you can just buy it for uh, a pretty low uh, amount of chaos early on um, but it's gonna help your clear it's gonna give you this really really nice proliferation if you don't have obliter obliteration you're still gonna be fine you still can use just like a you can use a plus one one you can have um, fire damage over time multiplier you can have flat damage to spells uh, like there's tons of different things that work scepters work very well and then for the shield we're looking for a little bit of spell suppression so um, you don't need to cap your spell suppression but you should get some spell suppression as early as you can uh, we're gonna definitely benefit from um, this node the chance to suppress spell damage uh, is a lucky it's a very powerful node with this we have 93 without it we have 74 so this is effectively 20 percent spell suppression for us or 19 it's very very powerful and it has maximum effectiveness while you are around 50 percent spell suppression so it's gonna be very very useful um, so we got the shield which has spell suppression life and one res so you're looking for like three stats on this and then you want to craft on this chance to avoid element uh, elemental ailments you can also replace um you can swap them around right so you can have life res and a chance to avoid elemental ailments and craft the spell suppression right that's also an option um, then we have the uh, helmet on the helmet you just basically want life and res and um, on some pieces you want some chaos res right we want to definitely get at least to like 50 percent chaos res um, and then you want to craft uh, the uh, physical damage from his taken as fire damage this is something that you're gonna uh, unveil from betrayal so i definitely recommend betrayal um, early on and uh, it's gonna be uh, a ton of essences if you are playing in ssf just farm essences yourself if not then essences are going to be pretty cheap because everybody's going to be farming them so you can easily craft a lot of the gear so it's like three mods that are decent and as you can see i'm not putting the resistances very high here uh, they're just like decent mods um, and then the physical damage taken as fire is very very useful because physical damage is going to be the scariest damage for us so that's why on the implicit uh, from the uh, searing exarch and eater of worlds we have extra aoe um, and also we have physical damage from hits taken as fire damage so fist taken as fire or fist taken as any elemental is going to be a very powerful mod that i definitely recommend getting um, then we have body armor uh, on the body armor you again you want some spell suppression um, you want uh, life you can get some life region as well uh, and on the uh, uh, prefix we can we are gonna craft chance to avoid elemental ailments so uh, you want to get avoid elemental ailments to 100 as soon as possible and we're gonna get it from shield from chest and from boots and that's gonna be doing it and also you can use a uh, uh, amulet anointment for that um, but that's something i'm gonna mention in a moment you can get on the implicit chance to block spell damage effectiveness of auras there is a lot of good options plus uh, one percent to all maximum resistances is excellent because it also includes the chaos res so that's really really nice um, and we're using mostly evasion energy shield bases um, energy shield we need this for the eb for basically that's going to be our mana pool for crafting the divine for casting the divine blessing especially uh, and then uh, evasion because we need some spell suppression so you want to give yourself a chance for spell suppression but you can also use evasion armor bases or just armor bases if you have enough spell suppression uh, and then we have also on gloves on the gloves we got the ignite proliferation some spell suppression on the implicit and then on the um, item itself you can for example roll it with like a, a essence for chaos resistance roll one other decent resin life and then you craft plus one to socketed aoe gems plus extra aoe because aoe helps a lot um, for our uh, build so this is what we're using uh, for gloves very very simple gloves that you can just use 
use a couple of essences, get some decent resin life, and that's it. And you just craft the prefix. Uh, and uh, the rest is gonna be basically hunting for the ignite proliferation with the eldritch currencies. For the boots, the priority is movement speed and life. You want movement speed and life, and then you can craft chance to avoid elemental ailments. That's all you need. So it's a very, very uh, easy pair, pair of boots. This is all, again, just super uh, beginning stages of the league gear. Um, and then we can get action speed and chance to avoid elemental ailments. If you have enough chance to avoid elemental ailments from other sources, you can get something like... Um, I think ignites deal damage faster, right? There is a lot of stuff you can get on boots, but this is just something for the beginning. For the amulet, you want strength and dex base, ideally, because we need like 155 strength and dex. Uh, so that's what you are looking for. And then uh, on the amulet, I put just crafted life, one modifier that you find on the item that's like decent, like lightning resist, an unveiled modifier for endurance charges. If you unveil the endurance charges, it's gonna also give you the chance to gain endurance charges on kill, and that's gonna be very helpful because again physical um physical resistances is uh is uh, something that we're going to be struggling with right so with endurance charges this is going to give you like one like again like 10 percent extra um 10 percent extra life against physical damage which is very powerful for a single modifier uh, then on the rings rings you want to again craft with essences for dexterity on str or strength hit a couple of decent res um, or one res and life and then craft the remaining res and life whatever you're missing on it and use amethyst rings just to get the chaos resistances super simple rings that you can craft yourself very easily um, stygian vice just use a chaos res essence until you hit some life you can also get some resistances on it uh, which is going to help you with other slots not requiring as much res and then you can craft armor and evasion on it and then for the abyssal uh, socket i definitely recommend phasing so chance to gain phasing for four seconds on kill is really really good you can also get fire damage to spells chance to get like uh, fire damage to spells while holding a shield fizz damage to spells while holding a shield and you can also get like fizz damage as um i think there is fizz as LA if you crit recently or something like that um, and I also recommend looking for a jewel that is decent that doesn't necessarily have all of those things but gives you corrupted blood immunity that also is something very helpful and for the flasks you want um, bleed corrupting blood removal on life flask quicksilver with movement speed jade and granite with um, armor and evasion the armor and evasion can be on anything like these suffixes can be swapped around and then quartz flask for phasing and also you want to reduce the effect of curses on you which is going to help you with mapping and that is like a super budget setup that you can you can craft all of the gear except for the obliteration yourself with just a couple of essences and a betrayal craft and that's it that's all you're gonna need in order to get this gear and you're gonna be able to basically just do all the like clear your atlas right you're gonna clear your atlas you're gonna get your watchstones this is a config for um this is a config for pinnacle bosses right so you're gonna have like a couple million damage while mapping you're gonna have like 1.1.5 uh guaranteed while uh like while using the obliteration so you can also have a second weapon you can get like a scepter plus one fire dot multi or like flat fire or something that's going to increase your damage by a lot as well um, and so you can use that for single target damage while bossing i definitely recommend that but obliteration is the thing that you want to be using for mapping um, and that's it and you just play with this build you can do t16 and uh, just get currency until you either progress with this build and you can just follow like a wave of conviction ignite build you can transition to something else um, or in my case i'm most most likely gonna be playing EK Ignite um, and as soon as I have the currency I'm basically gonna swap to EK Ignite uh, at some point and just play that because that's a build that I think I'm gonna really enjoy and it's gonna be uh, really fun to play and this is the way I'm gonna be leveling it so hopefully this is helpful the POB of course is gonna be in the description if you have any questions let me know in the comments below thank you so much for watching and see you next time